you remember that fake image of the Pope in the puffy jacket? Or how about when Donald Trump recently shared those pictures of Swifties for Trump? Or how about that fake AI-generated picture that showed an explosion happening near the Pentagon last year? Some of these examples are obviously more concerning than others, but whether it's for funsies or mayhem, they all illustrate the same thing. Generative AI is getting really, really convincing. This tech is now adept, pervasive, readily accessible, and increasingly fast. And there are countless reasons to be concerned about how that might impact the trust that we place in photos, and how that trust, or lack thereof, could be used to manipulate us. We've already seen a glimpse of this. Generative AI is driving an increase in scams, and the internet is full of political deepfakes in the run-up to the US presidential election. Photographic evidence does not mean much in a world where anything, believably, could be faked. Watermarking is easy to remove, and detection-based methods, like the websites that you drop an image into and they can supposedly tell whether an image is real or AI-generated, are notoriously unreliable. So what's actually being done to protect people from being misled? Good news! There are a bunch of initiatives that are working on how to resolve this mess. One of the best known is C2PA Authentication, something set up by the Coalition for Content Provenance and Authenticity, C2PA itself, and the Content Authenticity Initiative, which Adobe set up back in 2019. This system has the backing of huge tech companies like Microsoft, Google, OpenAI, Intel, Arm, and Truepic, and their solution is data. Specifically, metadata, which uses hard to remove cryptographic digital signatures to attach key information to an image about its journey before it reaches us as a viewer. It's kind of like a nutrition label, but for digital content. In theory, when this is attached to an image and we can see it, it should help us to determine what's real, what's fake, and if it is, how that fakery happened. Here's a rough breakdown of how this works. Step one, the C2PA and CAI create this technical standard. And then a bunch of companies all across the industry, from photography to image editing to image hosting, then have to agree to use and support that standard. Step two, Camera hardware makers and editing app makers then agree to embed their products with these metadata credentials. That could be in the form of content credentials like what Adobe uses, or under any other name really, the important thing is that it supports the C2PA technical standard and everything works together in tandem. Step three, online platforms will then scan images uploaded into them for these metadata credentials and then provide the information in that to their viewers. Or Alternatively, if you just have any picture that you want to check if it carries some kind of content credentials, you should be able to do so via a separately hosted database. For example, if I was going to take a picture on a Leica M11P camera, which supports the C2PA standard, it should log all the important information such as the camera settings and the date and time and even location of where that image was taken and embed it into the file itself. I can then take that picture and put it into Photoshop to make any edits with it. And whatever has changed, including if generative AI tools were used to make those changes, will also be logged in that metadata. Even if I put a picture in there that didn't already carry some kind of C2PA standard metadata credentials, Photoshop will still embed that metadata into the image so that it will show if I used generative fill or any of the other generative AI powered tools that Adobe has. Then image hosting platforms like social media generally will then be able to scan that picture if I upload it, pull that information out and provide it to their viewers because it isn't visibly available on the image itself. In theory, if all of these steps are adhered to, we should be able to more easily tell which images are authentic, which ones have been manipulated and which ones specifically are AI generated or have been manipulated using generative AI tools which all sounds way, way easier on paper compared to how this is actually going. So here's the bad news. Progress is extremely slow. The problem is interoperability and it's taking years to get all the necessary players for this on board. And if we can't get everyone on board, the system might be doomed to fail entirely. C2PA support is currently only available on a handful of cameras, including Sony's A1, A7S III and A7 IV, and Leica's aforementioned M11P. And while other brands like Nikon and Canon have pledged that they're going to support it, most have yet to meaningfully do so. Smartphones? 
the most accessible cameras for most people, are also lacking behind with any built-in C2PA support. It's a similar situation across editing apps. Adobe is implementing this across Photoshop and Lightroom, but while some other services like Capture One have said they're looking into traceability features like C2PA, most don't or have yet to express any interest in doing so. And one of the biggest roadblocks to all of this is figuring out the best way to present that information to viewers. Facebook and Instagram are two of the biggest platforms that do check for this information and do flag some of that to their viewers. But Meta's early attempt also angered photographers rather than helped them because they were flagging everything with a made with AI label, even if it was edited using regular tools that didn't use generative AI, like the cloning tool. Meanwhile, X, which is already completely saturated with all of these AI-generated images and deep fakes, hasn't implemented any kind of verification system, C2PA or otherwise. And that's despite having joined the C2PA back in 2021 before Elon Musk had purchased the platform. He had this to say at the 2023 AI Safety Summit. So some way of authenticating would be, would be good. Um, so yeah, I, I, that sounds like a good idea. We should, we should probably do it. <laughs> there you go. But nothing has actually materialised yet. There is this recurring argument that we shouldn't be concerned about the direction that generative AI is going to take us because this is nothing new. Photoshop has been able to manipulate images for 35 years. But do you know how f***ing hard it is to manually edit a photo like that in one of these apps? I looked up YouTube tutorials on how I would be able to do this and even if I wanted to add a lion to a picture, the videos giving me demonstrations for that are 10, 11 minutes long. If I wanted to do that on a new Pixel or Samsung phone though, I can just tap an area and tell it to add a lion. It's already going to take all of those complicated nuisances like perspective and lighting into consideration. And even if, cool, you follow a tutorial and you do create a very realistically edited image in Photoshop, that's just one picture. These AI editing apps that are now free and on our phones can do that in seconds. And even if the first one doesn't look as good, you can just keep going until it looks right. And none of this even takes into consideration just how expensive this kind of software can be. Adobe stops just short of basically asking for your firstborn child and you have to dodge all of their really complicated cancellation policies. But even if you use a free alternative like GIMP, you're still going to need access to a desktop computer or a laptop, which not everyone has now that we live in a world where smartphones can do just about everything. Meanwhile, it's taken barely a couple of years from generative AI apps to go from spitting out distorted Cronenberg-esque mashups with 17 fingers to creating something that's actually quite authentically believable, something that takes texture and lighting into account. And with no skill at all, in seconds, it's much easier to dismiss things like photojournalism in a world where anything could not be real. You can't always expect that people are going to do the right thing. And now anyone with a smartphone, hypothetically, could churn out highly manipulated images at a speed and scale we've never had to experience before. And yeah, you're gonna get some people that are gonna argue, well, with Photoshop having existed, we shouldn't be trusting online images to begin with. And that might be the way forward. But do you really wanna live in a world like that? Where you can't trust any picture that you see online? I don't, that sounds horrifying. And look, I don't want this to necessarily be a doomsday argument. This is just one possibility of where generative AI could be taking us. But even if we take a step back and we look at some of the far less serious implications, it's still incredibly f***ing annoying. Platforms like Pinterest that used to be really, really good for referencing materials for artists or finding haircuts or makeup examples that you're going to give to your stylist, right? You can't really use them anymore because the entire site is just populated with AI generated images and none of them are really flagged to indicate that that's the case. Even if by some miracle we woke up tomorrow in a tech landscape where all of this is working, the online platforms, camera makers and editing app providers are all on board and cooperating together this system might still not actually solve the issue at hand. Denialism is a potent and potentially insurmountable obstacle in all of this. And it doesn't matter if you're gonna supply people with evidence that something is real, if they're simply going to ignore it. And just to rub some additional salt into all of our wounds right now, despite the issues these systems are already facing, a cryptographic labeling solution is 
realistically our best hope to reliably identify authentic, manipulated and AI generated content at scale. And even then, they were never supposed to be a bulletproof solution. The companies that created systems like C2PA authentication completely understand that bad actors exist, and just because something is difficult to be tampered with doesn't mean it's impossible. Meanwhile, doctoring images, with good or bad intentions, is now the easiest and most accessible it has ever been. We're going to have to live with that, and it could leave us in a precarious situation. Nations all around the world are struggling to introduce regulations that can police the more harmful aspects of this stuff without accidentally infringing on things like artistic expression or parody, or more importantly, free speech. And it's highly unlikely that AI companies are going to pump the brakes on development while we're figuring out how we can get to grips with it. As a result, we're dangerously close to living in a reality where we have to be wary about being deceived by every single image put in front of us. Thanks for watching. Speaking of which, can you guess which one of these objects is AI generated? How about this one?